Welcome back. Okay, so we're going to jump into Flash now and get making these things. So the first thing to do is to set up the actual game FLA file. So I'm going to make a new Action Script 3 FLA. We're going to come back later and make an Action Script file. So let's get going. Um, I'm only going to assume that you've watched the last series of tutorials that I did because a lot of the stuff in there is still quite useful. There was a basic overview of classes. There was some coding into the timeline and some events and so on, so make sure you understood that video series. It's only about an hour long total, and it'll show you how to make a quick point and click game. But for the sake of this one, we're going to start by sorting out our um, workspace. So we need to resize this. It's going to be a perfect square. We'll do it 500 by 500. And solid black. I think that's okay. So. I'm going to save that, do it on the desktop, we'll uh, make a new folder for it, space game, and call it game. So good to go, just need to draw my ship now. So to do that I'm going to zoom in a bit, get quite close to it, just take two lines with shift held in. And, oops, sorry, chop off any excess. Keep sliding my mouse by mistake. Okay, so that's how I drew the, the ship, just basic little triangle. And then crushed it down. It's about right, let's just check on full screen. How does it look? Yeah, that's about the right size. So something like that will do. You could make your, your ships in anything, do them in Photoshop if you like. So let's get this converted then. Let's um, give it a name, convert it to a symbol. So it's going to be called ship. Whoops. We'll call it ship, set the registration in the middle and leave the type as movie clip for now. We're probably going to change that, I think. Um, we'll, we'll make it a sprite later on, which is basically a movie clip without the timeline. It's a bit more efficient. This box is important here. We're going to export our ship for action script, and that means that we can spawn new ships using code. It means that we can write action script files to control this this ship. So it's it's important that you do that. And when you do that, these two boxes get filled in for you. Um, the class here is just a copy of the name you've given the object, which is fine. We're going to leave that. This base class by default is set to movie clip. So I'm going to change that there, I'm going to put Sprite, because that's what we're going to work with. We want our ship to be based on a Sprite rather than a movie clip. A movie clip is based on a Sprite, so they can, it's kind of set up the same way as our ship. What you can do if you're in CS5 or above, you can click this pencil and it'll generate the class for you if it doesn't already exist. So by clicking there, it's now made um, the action script file for us. It's not perfect because it's still treating it as a movie clip. Um, we're not going to do that anyway, we're going to do it from scratch so we understand what's going on. So we're just going to quickly hit file um, oh, why am I in QuickTime Player? File, new and we want to make a new action script file. Okay and that's it, it's basically a blank text field and as you probably saw when I popped up that little window, the first word at the top was package. Now that allows you to group all your script up into similar classes and so on. We're not actually going to do that for the sake of this tutorial. I might do it later on towards the end. It just helps you organise yourself a bit better. If you're going to have a big library of reusable stuff, it's going to be very helpful to have it in packages. But for the sake of this, we're not going to. So we're going to open curly braces there and have a an unnamed package basically. So that's the package setup. Then we need to import any important libraries and classes. So import any necessary files, libraries. Oops. And in this case we're going to need the sprite class because our ship is going to extend the sprite. So this basically says load in another class that I can use. 
that's what this line does. Flash in the FLA does all this for you. It imports almost everything without you needing to worry about it. There are a few like tweens that don't actually do that. Um, but for the most part, you're okay. We're going to do import flash dot display dot sprite. We're also going to import the event class because we're going to make this ship move every frame. So that's import flash dot events dot event. And that lets us add an enter frame listener later on, which every frame will do something um, that we're going to tell it. I think that'll do for imports for now for this file. So we'll move on to declaring the class to making the class. So we'll make the class. To do that, we use the two words public and class. If we don't have this word public, which basically says anyone can use it, anything can use it, this flash file won't be allowed to use the script in here, so it, it will be totally pointless. It'll just give us errors. Um, it'll basically say it can't find the class. So we need the public class there. Then we need the name, which has to be the same as the, the um, object in your library. Ship. And then we need to use, well, you don't always have to do this. If your class is going to be based on another class, you need to tell it which class that is. And to do that, use the word extends. So our ship class extends Flash's sprite class, which we've included above. We've imported it just for that reason. So the whole line there, public class, which means that's a class anything can use, called ship, and it's based on a sprite. So we're going to take everything a sprite can do and we're going to add some new stuff to it. Now we're going to add properties to it. So first thing to do, just make a bit of space. We're going to um, tell the class what properties it has. In this case, we're just going to have a speed for the ship. I think that'll do. So we'll do um, var speed. And you can give it a type if you like by using a colon. So this is going to be an integer, I think, a full number. And what you can also do here, you could use public or private if you want it private. So a private variable can only be used by this class. I couldn't go to my flash file here, go to the actions and access that speed variable because it's private to this class. If you want it that way, that's fine. Um, we'll leave it like that for now. If you do want to be able to get at it, you need public. That's why you've done it up there. In terms of properties for this class, I think we'll leave it with just speed. So we can move on to doing functions. Uh, one function in particular is very important. It's known as the constructor. And a constructor function takes the same name as the class. So I'm just going to copy that. Function ship bracket. Open and close bracket because it's a function, it takes brackets, and what would normally go in there would be some extra information for this function to use. Now, it's best practice to not have that on your constructor, or you should have at least one constructor with no arguments. So I'm not going to provide it with any extra information here. Uh, we'll put a comment inside it. This is the constructor. This happens when a ship is made. It's basically initializing your class. And in here, really all we've got to tamper with is the speed. So we're going to set the speed. And I'm just going to put speed equals 5. So we've initialized the speed. We could have done that up there, but it's, it's better to do it here. And we're also going to trace made a ship. And we'll just check that works. So we've got to make sure that this file is saved now. Before it'll work, it needs to be saved. Action script files will not work um, if they're not saved because Flash drags external files in when it compiles them and it can only get to the saved version. So let's uh, go, try to save it. Command S or Control S. It's got to be saved in the same folder as the FLA and it's got to take the name of the class. So we're calling it ship.as. Press save. And now we can check if that's working by going back to our game and just testing the movie. So, control and enter. 
And there we go. So we've got the ship in the middle of the game, and we've got made a ship, which is part of our constructor. We'll just check it by um, dragging a couple more on. Um, okay, try that. Should get three traces this time. Yep, that's fine. Happy enough with that. Just going to save it. Okay, so let's um, advance it a little bit now. We'll um, add an event listener to make this move every frame. So we're going to add an event listener. And we've done this before in the last set of tutorials, so it shouldn't be new to you. Add event listener. This will be new, the type of event, but the actual structure of the line won't be. We're going to just use a normal event, dot enter frame. And we're going to call this update. So I'll just, I'm just going to update the comments actually. Add an event listener to update every frame. So we'll call the function update. So we're adding an event listener to this ship. Every frame, that's every tick of the SWF frame, um, they all work, any, any event listener that listens to a frame works from the parent SWF, from the actual video, not from itself. And we're going to use the function update to do something with that. So underneath the constructor, we're outside the constructor now, we're going to make a new function called update. And it takes an event this time, instead of the mouse event we were used to using in the last set of tutorials. And here we just want to move the ship based on its rotation. So we're going to use the ship's speed, which we've set to 5, and we're going to move the ship based on the angle it's facing. So there is a little bit of maths involved here. Um, it's only GCSE standard stuff, so hopefully you remember it from school. We're going to move in the X and Y based on a couple of trigonometry bits. So x is going to equal x plus math dot cos, cosine of the angle, and we're going to use the rotation of the ship, so the current rotation of the ship. The problem here is that the rotation is in degrees, whereas math dot cos uses radians, so we need to convert that. And to do it, we divide it by 180 times it by math dot pi. And finally, we need to times that by speed, otherwise we'll only move at one pixel a frame. I'm going to copy that whole line now, paste it underneath, change the x's to y, and the cos to sin, sine. So you need to remember your soccer toa from high school. Save that. Hopefully it will work. If we go back to the game, these ships should move the way they're facing. And they do. Just to check that the maths is right, we'll um, rotate them, see if they go the way they're facing when they're moved. Just get that one to go off that angle. And... Okay, let's test that. Yep, that seems perfectly fine. What we could do is just to make it a bit more random, instead of setting the speed to 5, we'll just do, uh, I don't know, 2 plus math.random times uh, 5. And what we could do is just give them a random rotation in there, but I'm not going to. Save that, test it again. They should move at different speeds now. Yeah, you can see that one's a bit faster. This one's quite slow, so that's working fine. I'm going to leave this video at that really, just make sure that you understand this, this structure here, the setup of the ActionScript file. Um, just get it full screen for you there. Make sure you understand what's going on right from package all the way through the imports, setting up the class, giving it some properties, and then doing the constructor, uh, constructor and any extra functions that you need. Play around with it, don't just make a ship, see if you can make a, a, like a bouncing ball. This could be a ball class that bounces down the screen. When it reaches the bottom of the stage, it bounces back up. Um, give that a go. You could do pretty much any sort of class you want, just basic movement around the screen. You could also look at my quiet videos on, on YouTube where I don't talk over them. I do plenty of random stuff in those. 
but we're going to progress through most of that anyway with these videos. So I'll see you in the next one.